The YouTube is your boy Wes back with another video. It's been a hot minute since I last talked to y'all, so I'm gonna try to get back to it. You know, make sure I get to y'all more consistently throughout the week. I've been doing a lot more videos. Um, for those of you that follow the Pro Talk page on Facebook, y'all know I've been on there with my boy Justin. Um, you know, we've been doing a lot of you know dropping a lot of stuff throughout each week. Usually a show or two every week. So a lot of big content has been posted on here, but I'm about to get back more on first degree sports as well. And you're going to be seeing a lot of, you know, content coming from both sides. But the reason I want to come to y'all tonight or today, sorry, if the camera's shaking a little bit, I got to hold it because I ain't really got no stable spot right now, but place it. But uh, yeah, the reason I want to come to y'all today is because tonight, well, Tonight, for y'all, I'm probably posting this the day before, but tonight, we got some major fights coming up in the lighter to weight divisions of the boxing world. We got, actually, both fights are lightweight. We got Vasily Lomachenko on one side, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Masayoshi Nakatani. Uh, Lomachenko, as y'all both know, former three-belt holder in the lightweight division. Former king of the lightweight division before, you know, in his last fight, he failed to Teofimo Lopez. And uh, Nakatani is another top contender in the lightweight division. Also fought Teofimo Lopez. Gave him one of the toughest fights in his career, in my opinion. And, you know, it's just it's just a very good quality, you know, fight. Good quality opponents on both sides. You know, this is what you want to see. From the nine champions, you usually want to see, you know, the contenders going at it. So on that side, we got a great fight going. You know, that'll be on, I believe, ESPN or ESPN2, one of them networks. You know, the top ranked brand, they work with ESPN, so it'll be there. And also, we got Gervonta Tank Davis taking on Mario Barrios, which, you know, that'll be in the 140-pound division. Right now, Josh Taylor, he's the current pound, uh, he's the current undisputed king up in there. But they'll be fighting for the WBA regular belt. So, especially in my opinion, especially if Tank win this, I think this would be a very, um, I think it's a big chance that we see Tank Davis versus Josh Taylor next. Just because, you know, Tank Davis is starting to be more on pay-per-view. You know, he became a huge, you know, his his stock went heavy up his last fight, Leo Santa Cruz, with that vicious pullback uppercut that he pulled on him that went viral. All the celebrities was posting it. You can see it in memes and, you know, uh, TikTok videos everywhere. It was just going crazy. And if he wins, you know, especially in a similar spectacular fashion of what he won in his last fight, there's no doubt in my mind. Well, I ain't going to say no doubt. But I could definitely see, you know, um, you know, Josh Taylor, his promoters going, you know, going over to the side, you know, with Mayweather promotions and doing business because that'd be a huge fight. Josh Taylor versus Tank Davis for the Undisputed Crown. You know, Tank Davis, he's a knockout artist. Uh, you know, the one past 15 fights by knockout, 24 and 0 with 20, you know, he only hasn't finished one fight. He got Mario Barrios, who's 26 and 0, got 17 knockouts in his own right. Way taller fighter than Tay. Yeah, you know, got longer reach as well, I believe. Believe, you know. Like I said, he got some pop too, so. And that fight, just to go into it a little bit, that I can really see this having to be a lot more of a tactical battle on Tank's side than what we usually see from him, you know. You know, as we you know, Tank is a slick boxer. He has some solid defense. But a lot of times in these lighter weight, you know, weight divisions, we see as soon as he feels he can take a punch from a guy, you know, he tend to, you know, wave a little bit on defense. And because, you know, he, um, like I said, he don't be feeling threatened as much. So he feels he can get his opponent up out of there for the most part. Now, with Mario Barrios is going to be telling with Tank moving up in weight. I still think the power is going to be there, but. This is what's going to be coming from the other side is what I'm curious to see how Tank takes it. Now, I think going in there, he's going to have to, um, you know, I was talking to some people earlier. We think he's going to have to collect some data early on to see, you know, what type of fighter um, Barrio is, you know. See if that power is going to be different than what he feels from his other opponents, which I believe it will. And I think he's going to have to be a more tactical, 
you know, fighter. Clearly, you know, with the size advantage, he's going to have to make make sure the fight get to the inside. That's what he's really going to have to do. He's really going to have to make sure the fight get to the inside. From what I've seen from Barrios, um, he, he's good at fighting long and rangy, but when it gets in the pocket, you know, it gets a little shaky for him, especially against a power puncher like Tank. I think it's going to be, you know, a real hard um, battle for him. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think it could go either way for sure. I lean toward Tank, uh, toward Tank Davis, but it's definitely a fight. I can see either guy, whether they get knocked out or, you know, sorry, little video uh, message. Or it can go to decision, so it's going to be real. I'm going to be real curious to see how this one go. But like I said, I, I favor Tank Davis in the fight, but it's 50-50, man. Both guys got pop. You know, a lot of, you know, Tank, like I said, I feel like a more slicker boxer. But it's going to be hard for him getting on the inside, you know, against this real tall, rangy opponent. Bit, you know, nice little step up, you know, in competition. It's going to be some good resistance. Now, when it comes to Lomachenko and uh, Nakatani, that's another fight I feel is 50-50. I can feel going either way, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some upsets tomorrow night. You know, Nakatani is a great, he got a great jab. You know, he know how to, um, you know, flick it a little bit. And he know how to make sure it's just uh you know, a nice power jab, and he could come in and leave with that right hand. And, you know, we've seen Loma go down before. Uh, you know, Nakatani a real durable fighter. But, you know, Loma is Loma, you feel me? The dude is a legend. You know, like we said, he just just a few months ago, he was, uh, he was the lightweight king. You know, I think he got better movement than Nakatani. I think he, get, you know, has way more combinations in his arsenal. Uh, I think it'd be wise just because of Nakatani's durability that he's shown. You know, he has really he's never been knocked out. He's going up against guys like Teofimo Lopez, you know, got that KO power. I think he's going to have to think Loma and be wise. If he wants to get Nakatani out of there to go to the body, you know, try to punish the body more and then come upstairs maybe in, later in the rounds, set him up with a nice knockout shot. But at the same time, I can see Loma just outboxing him, getting to a decision. Like I said, Nakatani, you know, he's dangerous. He's a dangerous fight. Real good boxer. And this is top, you know, this is quality competition on both ends. You know, tonight I'll be trying to watch both fights. But I'm just really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great, like I said. And this is big, you know, for both Loma and Tank because Loma wins. You know, he could... Maybe get his way back to working his way back to a rematch with Teofimo. Or, you know, with Teofimo still busy because, you know, his fight got postponed due to him catching COVID and not going to fight till about October. Maybe he can secure, you know, a fight against Devin Haney and get that WBC belt and try to see if, um you know, Teofimo will fight him then. You know, either fight. I'd love to see either fight. um But I'd rather see... T.O. and Devin Haney get in there just to solve the whole undisputed thing. You know, Loma did have his shot already. But I'm just saying, you know, from a Loma perspective, this would be a good starting point for him. Getting right back in there with quality competition. Taking it to, uh, you know, Nakatani in a, in a big way. And on the other side, Davis continue to build his pay-per-view stardom. If he can have a repeat performance like he did against Leo Santa Cruz. Maybe set up a fight with Jaws Taylor, either, you know, at the end of the year or, you know, sometime next year. Those would be some huge fights. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to everything tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm just real excited, man. We got some good few months of boxing ahead. I'm going to be making some more videos about the upcoming fights, about the news and rumors swirling around, all that throughout the week. So look out for me. Uh, if you like what you saw here today, make sure you hit the little bell button. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell button so you get the notification every time I post a video. You know, um, check me out on Facebook, First Degree Sports on Facebook. Like I said, check out my page Pro Talk where I do a podcast. You know, with my boy Justin, we talk about all sports, ranging from you know combat sports, you know basketball, soccer, hockey, everything. Man, just come check me out. And yeah, appreciate you all for tuning in today. And um, comment below. Let me know what you think of the fights coming up. And uh, yeah, just give me your take. Give me your opinion. That was my take. Hope you enjoyed it. And have a blessed day, everybody.